I still can't believe this happened, but yesterday I took over the official Godot Twitch stream and they even let me rank all of the 2D nodes from S tier to F tier. And it was a blast. I think it's actually one of the best Twitch streams I've ever done. There'll be links below to the official Godot stream as well as my Twitch stream as well. I suggest you go follow both of those. But this thing is mostly a good use case for us to all get together and have a conversation about various nodes. Now, am I 100% correct? No. Do I know everything? Absolutely not, especially as you see later in the video, I was completely wrong about GPU versus CPU particles, and I'm happy to have learned a ton along this process. Let me don't know down in the comments what I got wrong, what we got wrong, what you think should be better, because chances are, you might know more than I do, and that's okay. With that being said, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna be rating all of the Godot 2D nodes from S tier to F tier. Now, what does that mean? Well, I'm thinking S tier is almost like an overpowered tier. That is something that almost every project you use is like a cornerstone of that project. It's something that we should almost have the Godot contributors nerf how powerful that is. We should have them put in a patch to make it, you know, maybe a bit less performant or maybe a bit clunkier to use or have less use cases or have less, you know, covering things. So S tier is that, that node that you're just like, God, that is my favorite node. Now the opposite F tier, F tier is going to be interesting because on the opposite end of the spectrum, F tier is going to be something that maybe feels really clunky to use. Maybe it has a very finite use case. If there is such a node like that, that you absolutely don't like, we can throw that in the F tier. The scope of all of the nodes, this is in 4.2.2. I just downloaded it fresh today. Uh, this is gonna be all of the 2D nodes that are listed here. I expect to have a ton of dissenting opinions. If I'm just blatantly wrong about something, let me know. Cause I, I, there's a bunch of nodes as I was building out the tier list here, there's a bunch of nodes in here that I've realized I've never used. So I have a few goals Today, I wanna to learn something new and I'm hoping you can help me out because you are all way smarter than I am. You can tell me if I say a certain node is C tier, if you have a different opinion about it, let's talk about it. Let's have, let's have a cordial discourse about it. But I think ultimately, there's a lot in this engine that can make your life a lot easier. And I'm hoping today we all can leave this with a, a tidbit here or a tidbit there, more information about how to utilize Godot a bit better. So the animated sprite node. What is our opening thought about the animation sprite node? We're thinking somewhere between a S tier and A tier, maybe B tier, A tier, A tier, B tier. Tulian Osbambot says, I say B because I prefer to use a sprite node and change the animation with an animation player. It is somewhat overshadowed by sprites built in animation capabilities. Yeah, I'm going to go B tier. We'll, we'll slowly define more as we keep going. There's other nodes that maybe could do what it does. And in the course of a longer project, you might you might not rely heavily on the the animated sprite frame. If I've always just missed something, but I definitely wish I could have non-uniform frame lengths with the sprite frame animations. Like an animated texture, can an animated texture do that as well? Because this could be helpful. This is kind of what you're saying, right? Is you could change the, the you could change the speed scale, but then you could say. You know, this is for one second, that's for two seconds, this is for three seconds. Anybody, anybody pissed off at me yet? Have I, have I made anybody mad? Area 2D. Ah, oh, I love, I love, 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 love Area 2D node. S, 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 and on Area 2D, you get some really, really helpful, really helpful signals you can attach, which allow you to say when other areas are entered, when the other shapes are entered, when their bodies are entered. Uh, body shapes are entered. You can even do you can even do mouse inputs, so it can be pickable. You can say when the mouse enters and the mouse leaves it uh, inside of there, and you can then specify collision layers. So you can say what layer is it a part of and what layers is it looking to overlap with. Yeah, I think this one's OP tier. This is S tier for me. S tier and OP tier are going to be the same thing for the purposes of this argument. We'll go S tier, easy S tier. We'll call it we'll call it S tier, and then within each tier, we'll we can rank them even further. This next one is an audio listener. Now, this is the first node I've never actually used. If you want to open up the docs, you can click F1 and you can search the docs for anything uh, and it'll pull up right in the engine, which is super, super useful. So in my head, as I read this, if you have this located here inside of your, your viewport and you had another node 
over here that's making noise, this would specify where in your speakers it's going to be hearing the sound. So if you don't have one, it defaults to the center. It defaults to the center of the screen. So it's a way to have positional audio inside. Am I reading that correctly? It's a way to have positional audio inside of your game, but maybe your you have a situation where your player is actually over here. And so you would want the sound to feel way more on the right side than the left side. You think I've described it accurately? Cool. It doesn't have a lot to it. I could see this being a real like niche use case. How else would you do it, right? How else would you be able to define a different position for your audio to be there? It would be, I, you'd almost have to like, all of your spatial audio 2D nodes would have to have their positions offset relative to the point you want to do it at. And that feels clunky as heck to do, right? It feels, it feels essential, right? Because to not have this, it would be really, really hard to do it. I, I think I'm arguing myself into maybe a B tier. I think I'm arguing myself maybe into a B tier. I'm gonna go B tier higher than animated sprite. We'll do the audio stream player here. So this one plays you some spatial audio. You can pick a stream. You can do the volume, the pitch, the playing, autoplay, stream mix, distance. Uh, you can change that. I learned about this yesterday, this max poly poly polyphony. If this is higher, you could play the sound more than once and it'll limit how many times you can do it, which is kind of interesting. If you didn't have it, how hard would it be to use? It might be S tier. S tier compared to area 2D, it's very minimum A tier. Let's go A tier for now. We can always bring it up to S tier in a second. Uh, this next one I think is also something I have no clue what it is. This is the, the back buffer copy. A node that copies a region of the screen to a buffer for access and shader code. Mr. Liptic says uh, essentially for shaders and post-processing effects. I'm gonna go A tier. I'm gonna go A tier. A tier niche use case. I've made almost every game without using it. I've never used, I maybe used it for one shader that I eventually didn't use anymore. So uh, you want top of A tier? Okay, we'll go top of A tier. When you need it, you need it. And there's probably no way of working around it. Bone 2D. It's barely useful. F tier for you. A hierarchy of bone 2Ds can be found in a skeleton 2D to control the animated over the node 2Ds. Um, you can use bone 2Ds and skeleton 2D nodes to animate. This gives you access to like reverse kinematics, right? Useful for HD and vector art though, and pretty cool with IK. Yeah, I was going to, my mining game uses a vector art style for higher res. And I was going to, I was doing a lot of stuff in code and tweens that probably could have been just done through um using bones and uh skeletons okay first f tier question mark question mark first f tier no higher no c tier f tier you go with c tier someone's gotta be the f i gotta do it i need something in the f tier Let's also take the skeleton node here. Let's do the skeleton node as well while we're at it. How about we do bone in C tier and skeleton in F tier? If you have used them for a project that has been like fundamental to the project, how hard is it to use? That'll let's use that to determine C to F tier. Zaf says you tried and you gave up. Interesting. Interesting. All right, we'll put them both in F tier. Screw it. Screw it. Uh, this is the camera 2D node is next. Camera 2D node. Hi, Carl. Hi, Carl. Come here. Come here. Hi. Say hi to... This is, we're on a different channel today. Come here. Come here. Stop showing your butt to the camera. Hi. Hi. What do you think the camera node should be rated, Carl? Do you think S tier? If you don't put a camera node in a game, what happens? Because you can just run the node, right? It just shows you the viewport. You don't need a camera node. You don't need a camera node. Do you need it? Yeah, I don't think you don't need one. I don't think you do. The YouTube link is not working. 
if you do uh maybe we need to change the at mention portion here maybe it needs to not be this what if we do this yeah it has to be that um can you please change my youtube to this link um if you don't put a camera in there and you run a node, it just shows you the node on the screen. I agree it's probably S tier because you can zoom in and stuff and, and I'm just saying maybe this is a good case for an A tier. Maybe this is a good case for an A tier. Hey, somebody followed, cheers. Thanks for following the Go channel. It's been, how cool has it been to see people taking over this Godot channel? I think it's so cool. So thank you so much to Godot and, and Nat for setting this up. A tier seems reasonable since you don't strictly need one. Every game I make has a camera. That is true. I, I, don't, I don't ever make a game without the camera. I'll go with S tier. I'll go with S tier. I'm just trying to be, I'm trying to be edgy. You don't need to be edgy, Aramis. S tier above or below Area 2D node. We love the Area 2D node, right? We were big fans of Area 2D. Let us go to the next one. What is this guy? What is this one here? Canvas group. I also don't think I've used canvas group. Where should we put the camera group? The canvas group. Child canvas item nodes of a canvas group are drawn as a single object. It allows um, to draw overlapping translucent 2D nodes without blending. Give it an A tier. It looks super useful for shaders. Yeah. Is that what we did for the other back buffer copy? Yeah, we did. Uh, this is canvas. Can Canvas modulate. Canvas modulate applies a applies a color tint to all nodes on a canvas. Only can be used to tint a canvas, but canvas layers can be used to render things independently. That just seems okay. It's something I should probably use. I think it could definitely be helpful to use something like this. Yeah, but not crazy. Yeah, oh, we'll call it mid. We'll call it mid. We need our first C tier. We need our first C tier. All right, now we get into some more fun nodes. This is the uh, this is the character body 2D node. S absolutely S tier. You could make an argument for A tier. How about you make an argument for A tier? Theoretically, you don't need them, but we use them all the time. Uh, S tier. Imagine trying to check is on floor. That's an interesting question. What's better, character body 2D or area 2D? Area is better than character. Areas are more versatile. But like imagine not being able to check something is on a floor. You could ray cast. You could ray cast or even use an area to check where we are. That's true. It would be it would be clunky. It would be clunky, but you could do it. Alexander, you're learning so much from this. Cool. That's my goal. That is my goal. That's awesome. That's my goal here is I want to learn something new. I want you to walk away with something new. I want you to walk away with like a better appreciation for a node that you thought was good. And I want you to be pissed off that I gave the bone and the skeleton the F tier. Those are my three goals. Yeah, let's do static body while we're at it. Yeah, static body, um, a 2D no, a 2D physics body that can't be moved by external forces when moved manually doesn't affect other bodies in its path. Basically your walls. I like this as an eight, a, a top A tier, just because it's super easy to use, right? It has, it has a high, it's easy to use, it's easy to implement and like, you could create walls in seconds. No second guessing. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly gonna be second guessing. That's that's the whole point of this is we're trying to we're trying to expand our brains. Rigid body 2Ds. Rigid body 2D implements a full 2D physics. It cannot be controlled directly. Instead, you must apply forces to it, gravity, impulse, etc. And the physics simulation will calculate the resulting movement, rotation, react to collisions, and affect other physics bodies in its path. Rigid body is is A tier. We're in A tier. Oh, you look like a little beach ball. Beach ball. I wouldn't make a game that uses rigid bodies unless it's a jank slash joke game. These are little rigid bodies. You can shoot really hard. Pew! These are all little rigid bodies. I, I like them for this. They're useful. Would you do something else for them, though? Definitely A tier. Let's put it low end of A tier and we can we can maybe if A tier gets too full, we can bump it down to, to B tier as well. Cause it could be like a B plus. A B plus tier sounds like maybe what we're thinking. 
Does that seem fair? You think you think the Ridge Body's S plus tier? Johnson coming with the hot takes. Get him. Get him. We'll move it. We'll move it up here to top of A tier because of Johnson. The the Johnson buff. The Johnson buff. All right. Now do collision shapes. This is. Let's do the uh, collision shape first. Collision shape here. A S A tier. High A tier. S tier. The circles are nice. The circles are nice because what does that give you over collision polygon? I think collision polygon is S tier, but collision shape gives you really easy circles and capsule shapes. And they're just easy to like, they're easy to use, right? Like to change the, the radius of a circle is super easy. Maybe polygon A tier, collision shape S tier. Next, uh, next category here. Yeah, CPU particles. I think it's S tier because look at his little face. It's a little, it's a little rain cloud with a little two eyes. This is the hair. Let me zoom in for you. Look at it. It's so cute. There's the eyes. It's going, whoop. and it has a little hat, a little hair. I'm just kidding. It's probably not that high. I think I, I don't know if I want to admit this, but I always use CPU particles, not GPU particles. Uh, GPU particles have just less options where CPU particles have so many more choices. What was S's GPU is S, CPU is F. I think it's the opposite. CPU are horrible. GPU has more options. Am I wrong? Am I, am I, is this, is this the moment where I get canceled? Is this it? Because I, I, I always use CPU particles. I've never used GPU particles seriously. Is this it? Is this the end of my career? Ah, well, it, it, it was a good run. Why GPU? I've used CPU particles and I have never had a performance hit. I'm confused. Why is GPU better? GPU node uses, used to create a variety of particle systems and effects. GPU particle 2D features an emitter that generates some number of particles at a given rate. Use the process material property to add a particle process material to configure particles behavior. Alternatively, Uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just wrong. I'm just wrong. I thought, <laughs> I thought, I thought, you see all of these great, you know, direction and gravity, initial velocity, angular velocity, orbital velocity. I went to this. I've never filled these in and I saw these are my choices. Time collision drawing and trails. And I'm like, well, there's just less options. You can add shaders to, oh, fuck me. Hey, you know what? It's okay to be wrong. This is what we're teaching you. You can be wrong. And even better, you can admit that you are wrong. And this is why I'm doing it. I decided to come to the Godot official stream to learn why GPU particles are better than CPU particles. And I was in incredibly wrong. All right, so we have, these are CPUs and we have GPU particles. Where are they? Here you are. We think S tier? We think S tier? And they let me control the Godot stream. Can you imagine, can you believe that? Can you believe that? They gave me the stream key to this stream and I didn't even know how useful GPU particles were. What a wild, what a wild world we live in. And then we're going to put the CPU particles in C tier because, because Aramis from 10 minutes ago loved them. So I have to pay respect to my past self who I love dearly, even though he was wrong. I'm going to put him in C tier. You want CPU particles in trash tier? You're <laughs> shattering my, shattering my heart. All right. All right. We'll put him, we'll, you win. You win. I, I, I was wrong. I'll admit it. I was wrong. I'm still putting them higher than skeletons. Uh, joint 2D node. Uh, what's the first joint here? I think it's dampening. C tier. Let's look at the other joints as well. Groove. I'm having a hard time with any of these joints giving them higher than C tier. You think above canvas modulate? What do we think about the, the I guess the joints in general. Does anybody have any specific use case that says these joints are are highly useful. They, they could be in a niche case. I could see them having uses and having them be useful. Maybe like that. Dampening, pin, the 
the ball and socket joint. I don't know what this other one's called. I think they're incredibly useful to help me fill out my C tier to make the C tier look fuller. I think that for that purpose, joints are great to help me fill out my C tier. <laughs> uh, directional light 2D. Point light is much cooler. 2D games that use lights, well, are very, are really pretty. Well, everything is better with good lighting. True. Point light's S tier. All right, point, point light, which is this one. S tier, maybe this one B tier, A tier, above buffer, top of B tier for the directional light. I like that. I like that as well. Up next is the line 2D node is either low end S tier or high end A tier. I like the line 2D node. So you can give it a width curve. You can tell it's capping the joints. You can tell it the bordering. You can give it a uh, the actual um, type of texture you're gonna be doing, which could be an animated texture as well, right? Can't you animate this? Atlas mesh, and yeah, animated texture. You could have animated textures for them. I learned how to use them because I was trying to connect these nodes together. And you can click and drag, and these are line 2D nodes. You could also use you could also use a draw call to draw lines as well. You, like the line 2D just makes that really easy to do. Well, let's get a few more on here so I can show you what's satisfying. If we do multiples, we can pop it. Ready? This is my cat, Martin. Say hi. No. Ow, ow, ow. Are you, are you just gonna stand there? So we think top of A tier. Top of A tier. We have collision shapes, rigid bodies in there, static bodies. I think maybe mid A tier. I like mid A tier. I think it's a very flexible node. And if you haven't explored using them yet, I would highly recommend having a go at exploring, um, checking them out and seeing what you can do. Um, there, it does have quite a bit of flexibility and power to it. Okay, on to, is that a marker? Marker 2D. It's like, a plain node 2D, but it displays as a cross in the 2D editor at all times. You can set the cross visual by using the gizmo in the 2D editor C tier. C, C tier? I just use node 2Ds and I call them my pivot. I, I, I could use, instead of using a node 2D, I could use a marker 2D and call that pivot. I think it's just meh. Uh, that probably brings us to node 2D. How about we just do node 2D? I think no 2D is like S tier. No 2D equals not great, but not bad. I think if we're being completely honest with ourselves, it's probably mid tier. First in the S tier since it's object oriented program, since everything else inherits from it. By definition, it should be the middle because there's gonna be all these things inherit from it. So it, 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 it enables the stuff above it and it enables the stuff below it. So it should be the average 2D node should be node 2D. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. It's nice for organizing stuff and scenes and stuff, but it doesn't have a lot of functionality. So it should be the average, which in this case is our B tier. Uh, mesh instance, it's better for shaders. We have a group for shader stuff. Maybe put them both B tier for, for even sake. It is this symbol, a parallax layer. Ooh, these are getting reworked in 4.3, right? Parallax itself, parallax. So yeah, that's a good distinction to make, Zaft. Parallaxing itself is very useful for giving depth to 2D scenes. People in chat are saying the specifically the parallax node, the parallax layer itself, less less than useful. Old API B tier. Bottom of B tier. This is the path 2D node. Add a point to the empty space. So you could change the point like that. Could add another point, add another point. And then change to this button. I mean, it's it seems pretty good. I think this might be a B tier node. It seems like it could be useful. I, I haven't had a use case for something like this, but I, 
I definitely could. Call path and path follow the same exact thing. B tier, maybe above mesh instance, lower than animated sprite. This is a light occluder, light occluder, if I'm saying that correctly. Again, sounds a little dirty. Um, I, th I think light occluders are pretty, pretty freaking helpful. It occludes the light cast by light 2D um, cast shadows. The light occluder 2D must be provided with a occluder polygon 2D in order for the shadow to be computed. Um, you think A tier? Where do we put the other lights? Maybe we put it next to light. The polygon 2D node. A polygon 2D is defined by a set of points. Each point is connected to the next, with the first point being connected to the first, resulting in a closed polygon. Polygon 2Ds can be filled with color, solid or gradient, or filled with a given texture. Top of A tier. Uh, this is one where I haven't used it a lot myself either, so I'm going to rely on people who have. Maybe next to polygon. It looks pleasing to be next to it. it they, they look compatible. They look like they want to be next to each other. All right, now we have Raycast. Ooh, Raycast. I think this is S tier. I'll give the people what they want because I agree with the people. In between collision shape and camera. I think they're very, very useful. Uh, remote Transform 2D. That's a node. Remote Transform 2D. Remote Transform 2D pushes its own Transform 2D to another node 2D derived node called the remote node in the scene. It can be set to update another node's position, rotation, and or scale. I've never used it. I used it exactly once and forgot it existed. It sounds useful, but I never, it does sound useful. I usually use like, I do this in code. I say too local or too global, like middle B tier has its use cases, but you could also just do them other way. C tier, you think C tier beside path 2D? Yeah, that makes sense. Shape cast, shape cast, also good, right? Shape, but maybe not as good as, maybe not as high as the ray cast. I could see it being very powerful. I've never used it. I've always just used ray casting. It could also be done with multiple ray casts as well. So we're thinking the shape should be. Do we, do we think it's S tier? Do we think it's S tier? Have ray. That's a good point. Have ray cast point down to it. That's a very good point. Thank you, Inker Smashing. There has to be aesthetically pleasing things in here. Just like, I, I kind of want these to be next to each other. They look pleasing. All right, Sprite 2D. S tier, second only to Area 2D. Most of my games are made by having an Area 2D and a Sprite. This could be most of your game right here. Could be these top. You can make a game with just this stuff very easily. We only got a couple more here. What is this one? Is that a tile map? Tile map, tile map. Maybe tile map, 4.2 tile map, low S tier, 4.3 tile map, high S tier. I do use them. I just don't remember that that is what they are. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a phony. You think tile map is A tier? Uh, you can, you, you definitely can do stuff without tile map. I might agree with that. By definition, because it does so much for you, it is so effective, tile maps are. It does a lot for you, but at the end of the day, it does take a learning curve to get used to. And like auto tiling is nice. The editor is is very helpful and useful. I'm having a hard one. I, 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 I like low end S tier, but I also think A tier could be a decent option. High A tier, tile map, high A tier. It also gives us the lineup of our, our path and our shape for the ray casting. Uh, the next one is a touchscreen button 2D. Uh, it feels like a niche use case. When you need it, it's going to be very helpful. High, high B tier. I haven't used it. Anybody else? Anybody use them and, and enjoy them? Uh, these last two are visual notification nodes. I think these are probably going to be mid tier as well. Enabler 2D represents a rectangular region of 2D space. When any part of this region becomes visible on the screen or in a viewport, it will emit a screen entered signal and likewise it will admit a screen exited single when no part of it remains visible notification is a tier enabled is f tier for you oh notifier is the exclamation point sorry is that correct okay notifier is next thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you how do i feel about this i'm pretty happy with it i'm in shambles that i was so incorrect about gpu particles versus CPU particles, CPU being down here, GPU being up here. But I learned a lot. Oh my gosh, I learned a lot. Who else learned a lot by doing this? Because honestly speaking, having S tier nodes versus F tier nodes, it doesn't really matter that we ranked them. But I think 
the act of going through that process is very helpful. It's been a blast. Thank you so much to Godot for putting this on. Um, I am infinitely blown away how powerful GPU particles are versus CPU particles. I just cannot thank you much for telling me how wrong I am. And I want you to know it's okay to be wrong. It's okay to make mistakes. It's okay to feel like you're not good at something, but you can do it. You can make a game, you can get it out there. I grew up playing video games and I never thought I could have one. And now I have a, a, a game on Steam and people can play it and buy it. And it's a fun game. Is it a perfect game? Absolutely not, but it's my first one and I did it. And you can do it too. It just takes a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, a little bit of work. The tier list went very well. I'm very happy with it. Um, until next time, I've been Aramis. But bye bye. Bye bye. This is fun. This is cool. I was more nervous for this to be happen. So we'll see you later. See you next one.